Alright. We are at the Colorado River. This is the old uh, Rio Grande route that took you to Pueblo. It crossed the Colorado River here. Let me try to zoom in a little bit. Yeah, the Gunnison River pours into the Colorado River right here on the other side. And the river flows west. Flowing that way. And you can see all the names that have been carved into the rock. Really can't make out any. So much erosion. I haven't been able to make out one yet. There's obviously a lot of camps down on that other side because I've noticed a lot of foot traffic. A lot of home bums. I hadn't seen any riders yet. But fixing to take a walk across. Yeah, this back towards the yard. Here's the track goes that way too, heading towards Denver. Or Helper and Salt Lake that way now. This is all just coal now. Everything going to the coal mines about so 60, 70, 80 miles out. Then the track no longer is active after that. But we'll take a stroll and see what else we can't find. See, that's kind of like a warning for rail workers, maintenance away workers. That way they don't get the track bed too high. Because then you'd have to recalibrate how much excess height you have up here. The higher you push it, and then that throw off what their clearance is. Yeah, I've seen like five or six people cross the bridge. So, be my luck. Cold train will come. Yeah, one of my first camps was on the other side of the river here. Yeah, I stuck a bunch of single rocks on top of every rail line in case a train come during the night. I'd know when it came, or about when it came, and what direction it's heading. When it crushes one of them rocks, that will, the next revolution around, will leave a little dust spot. So you could tell what direction it's coming, or going. Yeah, so if you're ever at camp, or gotta be away from your camp, while you're waiting on a train, and... Want to know if a train ever come while you was gone? Just set a, a rock or two on top of the railhead. Or a twig or a bread tie or something. Yeah, depending on what time of year, it's kind of dangerous making your camp out there. Yeah, there's a Gunnison River coming out right there. Now, I did see a guy, a couple of guys, uh, they had a little dog with them. They were dressed like riders. That's another subject I've seen lately people talking about whether you call yourself a tramp or a hobo 
Uh, it depends on when. Now back in the 90s, sometimes when I'd tag, I'd put tramp, depending on how I felt. If I felt like, you know, loafing around uh, several days in a town, I, I'd tag tramp. But if I was always on the move like usual, I'd just tag hobo. And lately, I just haven't been putting dates when I tag. Uh, but back in the day, I used to put the exact day. Yeah, all this river bottom here, if you ever wanted to look for fossils, you'd be kind of out of luck along a big river bed because the river throughout millennia just carves its way back and forth and just erodes any fossils that would be there so you need to go up on the bluffs matter of fact there's a bluff we could climb maybe yeah, we're almost to the end we'll try to go down to the confluence to where the gunnison comes in let's see if I'm zoomed out all the way yeah I think the stability on this is still working, but I notice I can't zoom that 100 times zoom when I'm on the 4K. Now this one, I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try using that merging app, and we'll see how the quality comes out, because I just can't make a 40, 50 minute, an hour, hour long video with the camera continuously on for that whole hour. And we'll see if that degrades the quality of the the video. Yeah, I should have brought my marker. Well, oh, that's that kind of fence they got around the yard in Roseville. Boy, oh, this is impenetrable. It ain't that sissy fence. But weird thing is, you go down just to the end down there, and it ends. Yeah, all that garbage. See, a lot of times riders get that, get the blame for that. Yeah. That's another thing. See all these round rocks? These spherical rocks? You ain't gonna find no fossils. That just shows where a riverbed has been at once. Wherever you see the round rocks, the river used to be there flowing. And that, that's just mud that's been laid down over millennia. I'm not sure what uh elevation how far we are above the uh like different time areas like the cambrian and jurassic so i don't know what what elevation level that's it but it looks pretty much like shale slate anyway not gonna be anything old in that really now you go north of here there's some fossil beds that elevation's a lot higher yeah let's see i think now there's no way over to the gunnison river but it's just over that fence That actually might be occupied. Hey. Yep. That actually ain't a little bad squat, but 
God, nasty in there. Look like the honey bucket sitting right outside. Yeah, it looks like they still use these tracks up here for gondolas and tanks. See, them yard lights ain't even on anymore. There's them gin set engines. And that long string of UP engines. Now them three BNSF Jeeps that were running without a crew, they're gone this morning. And one of those lines had crushed rock on it, so something came. Looked like going west. Well, the piling level's finally gone down, and all the crappy fallout in there. Yeah, we're almost to them shove tracks. There's the old Union Station. It's all boarded up to. Yeah, that rock shop is just right up around the corner too. Yeah, this little nook. This was an old catch-out spot back in the day. Like you was going to uh, Salt Lake City. I remember me and about seven or eight guys and a girl were waiting right here probably back in 93 or 1994 and she went she went and got some water somewhere in a big bucket and come back back and forth kept filling that bucket she washed all us guys hair man that felt good there's nothing that feels better than a woman washing a, your hair Yeah, here's some tanks. Uh, well, where's the sign that says go? Uh, yeah, there's a couple gondolas over there. There's some scrap on the other side. So they just load it with a one of those portable magnets, electromagnets. I don't see it. Yeah, boy, this ain't seen traffic in forever. Ugh. Can't believe how much it has changed and has not changed. If that makes sense. The old spots, some of them anyway, are almost the same as they were 20 25 years ago but a lot of new stuff up too now the homeless people i've seen so far here it's not as bad as it is in other parts of the country as far as the meth they're not tweakers. The ones I met this morning ain't tweaking out. They actually telling me good morning and nice weather. And see, that's a real person there that tells you good morning instead of sneaking up on you and barreling around you and talking to themselves. I miss them days where any tramp or hobo walk by your camp tell them good morning and have you had coffee come get you some if you hadn't them days are gone 
Yeah, somebody asked me, is the higher elevation here affecting me? Not really. Uh, every day is a different day for me anyway as far as health. So it's kind of hard to, to really judge. Yeah, the, I brought most of my good Alaska Carhartt winter wear uh, extremes. I brought them uh, flannel line Carhartts. Uh, and I really appreciate sending those to me. A subscriber sent them. I'll wear them in the real tough weather. But, yeah, kind of hope to get a train in video before I upload this one. There's UPS there. Uh, well, if you ever get busted riding a freight train here, Boy, you wouldn't have to go far to go to jail. That's that new jail. Yeah, we're fixing to go up, walk up this and get on top, see what we can't see. Boy, there's a whole nother line of UP engines. Now uh, that fence is causing my camera to focus on it. Yeah, this wasn't here either last time I was here. There's your overhead signal. So a lot of trains will come there to stop. You see them little piles of white? You could tell trains have sit there a while. That's what you look for when you're wondering how long a train will sit. Yeah, there's a new jail too. I kind of wonder if it'd be worth it to walk down there to them engines. And here we have the overhead red block system here. Uh, you see that there? That is 50 for freight and 50 for passenger. Usually it'll be a lot slower for the freight. But uh, yeah, they're both 50 here. So Amtrak and freight can go 50 beyond that point. But... A lot of times when I'm out waiting on a train, I look for these overhead block systems. And if it's pointing this way for traffic going that way, I wait beyond it, this direction. Not likely they're all going to stop, but you sure have a heck of a better chance of having one stop. There's a pile of stuff. You could tell a train has set for a really long time there if he leaks out that stuff. Yeah, I noticed he kind of got some filtered sunshine. That really high cirrus. But the forecast is looking still really good. Unless you're there, it don't matter. Well, for as polished as that railhead is, it sure is a lot of slow traffic. It's just coincidental. I haven't been here when something has run down at the convenience store or looking at the pawn shop or the rock shop yeah it's a little hard to get up to them engines that string of engines down there 
it's kind of elevated and you got to walk up a 45 degree incline of loose gravel so I don't feel like doing that so this tour of Grand Junction is being summed up unless I come across something else you know I noticed someone posted a new video on YouTube about me five things you didn't know about hobo shoestring I watched that and I'm like everybody knows all those five things and besides you're wrong on one of the very first ones it said shoestring's longest ride ever was 2,800 and whatever miles and that was it it's some robotic woman voice and it just shows random stupid pictures uh, yeah on freight train the longest I ever rode on one train was two two thousand eight hundred and something but my longest trip ever was about nine thousand miles 1983 Cape Town South Africa to New York and then like three months before that it was the same trip from New York to Cape Town about eight or nine thousand miles my dad went and worked for Brown and Root nuclear plant startup down there in Ca outside Cape Town and that was kind of during the apartheid stuff going on down there I really don't remember too much except the cold cold Atlantic Ocean down there and the desert and all the sun but yeah it, said something about five things you never knew about hobo shoestring uh, it must have just come out in the last week or two I, I'm like who in the world doesn't know those five things it's embarrassing almost so I commented on there and tried to set them straight. Maybe that person who made the video needs to know five things about me. But here he is bragging, think, thinking he knows five things that nobody else does when he's wrong on just about all of them. But anyway, it's Grand Junction for you here. I really haven't gone out too far from the tracks. I don't want to get too far from my gear. But anyway, that's about it. All right, this last couple of video after this is a couple of leftover scenes that I made when I was back in Tennessee. It's just me testing my camera out. Uh, it's just me and a dog and Ken kind of wandering around and Ken showing his new phone but uh, I thought I'd instead of wasting them and deleting them I'd, I'd put them on the end of this video here well I hope you learned a little bit about Grand Junction Are you coming up here? yeah I'm gonna do a test video here it's on 4G right now and you gonna make it see if you can do on one leg all the way up well I've got a lot of leaves already fell we're about at peak they call it peak when it starts getting ugly again you want to um, tell your viewers about this phone oh yeah this is Ken's new phone uh, Samsung A12 That's really nice phone. I didn't know Samsung had so many different models and makes. Oh, it's focusing really good on it. I like that camera on it. Oh, I thought it was further that way. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> ah, no, la, la. Yep. Going to...
Colorado tomorrow. I thought that was a bird feeder. Where are you taking me, sir? Yeah, I think the stability thing is off when you're on 4G. I notice it's a little bit more shaky. Let's see how the zoom is on it. There's the lake. Let's see if I can... Yeah, so far so good. Let's see... That sandbar. Yeah, that's as far as it'll go. Yeah, I think being on 4K is limiting my zoom hey buddy hey who do you belong to huh huh where are you going fatso come on buddy he might not see us he might have bad eyes over here come on hey come on come on come on buddy i thought maybe he didn't see us some old dogs can't see anymore Hey, buddy. Hey. Watch him go. <laughs> Start eating my hand. Is that that dog we seen down there a long time ago? Yeah, I guess. I don't know who he, she or he belongs to.